Howdy, howdy. Well, bow season starts this Saturday, so I thought I'd share something pretty cool with you. Now, some of you might be a little controversial about this idea and say it's a bad idea, but hell with it. I'm gonna show it to you anyway, and I'm gonna hunt with it. So, the first compound bow that I ever bought was back in 1982. This is that exact bow. It has sat in this case, heck, since I lived in, when I lived in California in my apartment for 18 years, it sat in the barn. And uh, I lived here in Port Murray in the house for six years, so it's sat in the shed, right? So as a matter of fact, I haven't shot this bow, nor taken it out of the case up to this point in 37 years. I bought it back in 1982 from Gander Mountain when I was 19 years old, and as I said, I shot my first deer with it. As a matter of fact, I shot a lot of deer with it over the years. Well, the reason I'm sort of resurrecting uh, this dinosaur, if you will, is because I guess I'm sort of a dinosaur. I have a hard time trying to use a, a release. I can't seem to get that in my head. Maybe someday I will, but right now I can't. And I always like using my fingers. And that is, you see me shoot the long bow, and you're going to see me shoot this. So when I took it out of the case, you, I thought, what kind of shape could this be in? Well, I'm going to show, show it with you all. So this is it. I bought this again in 82 from Gander Mountain. So I never really knew what kind of bow it was, but looking at it, I guess it has a browning uh, quickie quiver on it. I'm assuming it was a browning bow with just a, a Gander Mountain name tag on it. As I said, I bought it right out of the catalog, never shot or anything. That's how I, I bought it back then. And um, I don't remember what I paid for it. But uh, anyway, I checked the limbs. The limbs are in excellent condition. No cracks, no stress uh, cracks anywhere in the limbs. Couple little hairline cracks right on the bow itself. Very, very superficial. Very, very little. Not even in the surface. Um, it's in really great shape. This is something kind of interesting. Check this out. Probably a lot of you don't know what this even is, but this is a uh, let's see if I can show it to you. flipper rest right here. A little cheap flipper rest. <laughs> so as you can see, I have one pin. Well, my cousin back in '82 when we got these bows said. Uh, well, we're going to teach you to use pins. I always shot freehand. And uh, I said, well, maybe one pin. So that's what we have, one pin, and that's all I ever shot with. You know, it was real fancy. <laughs> and uh, so the, uh, the string is in excellent condition, which is really weird. The cables are in great shape. There's no frays anywhere. I put a little wax on the string. Um, <laughs> these were your silencers back then, <laughs> right? And uh, the arrows are Easton Game Getter 2117s, right? I'm sure they still make those. I guess they do, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure they make aluminum. So let's show you this too. They have satellite hunting heads. Check those out. Pretty simple three-bladed satellites. That's what I hunt it with. And uh, the. Uh, the problem that we have with the arrows right now, as you can see, folks, is that they're dry rot. The veins are literally gone, right? <laughs> so the first thing we got to do is refletch these arrows. So let's have at it, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so the proper way, I guess, to refletch an arrow is with an arrow jig and with a fletching tool, which neither of those I happen to have. So my method is probably going to be considered by many of you out there archaic primitive, even wrong. But you know what? I don't care. It works for me, and that's what we're going to do today. So I have a simple straight edge razor blade. I bought a pack of plastic veins from Amazon for 10 bucks, a million veins. And I bought some instant arrow glue for fletching in knocks. And I've already refletched a few of my arrows. They came out very nice, as you can see. Right? Very professional looking. <laughs> but let me tell you something else about these arrows before we begin. So my good friend Dennis Peterson said, let's check out these arrows. So we put them all on this, uh, I don't know what the hell it's called, an arrow tester balancer um, rotator. I don't know. He put them on there and he spun the arrows. And you know what? Every one of my arrows but two are slightly bent. But you know what? I don't care. I'm going to hunt with them. You'll see. They'll shoot fine. So let's begin.
Okay, so I refletched several of these old, archaic, primitive, bent 2117 arrows. <laughs> and now it's time to have at it and knock one and see how we do. So this is the first time I've knocked an arrow on this bow since 1982. Let's see what happens. Just like riding a bike. Try that again. I think we're ready. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of this 1982 37 year old compound bow. <laughs> Plus, my Homemade, archaic, very primitive, I might add, uh, arrow fletching lesson. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, i like to wish everyone out there a very, very happy and very safe deer hunting season. I hope you all shoot the biggest buck or doe, whatever your choice is of your life, and I hope everybody has a good time. So I really don't know what the lesson or moral of the story was for me showing this old bow, but maybe something like this. Maybe just because something's older, doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't deserve a second chance, nor just because something's older doesn't necessarily mean it isn't better. Think about that, gang. I'll see you next time.